Abba Yahweh, we bless you today. We thank you for your son, Yeshua. You. Thank you for the good land. Thank you for all that you do for us, both small and great. Thank you for all the praise reports. Thank you for the uh, prayer requests. And we just want to show our love for you by keeping your commandments. The Shimmy Hushua. Amen. All right, tonight, we always talk about being overcomers. Tonight, we're going to look at what we need to overcome. And remember, the only thing he likes, he's going to uh, do anything about is those that overcome. And so we need to realize life is about what? Overcoming. And you can't overcome if there's nothing uh, negative in your life coming at you or uh, adversity or all these other things. And sometimes the father sends them himself. Then what are you going to do? See, because all the ones he's looking for is what? Overcomers. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 and all these seven assemblies. One of the last things Yahushua says is to him that what? Overcomes. So if you're not overcoming, you're not going to be in the bunch. He's only looking for overcomers. All right. Um, we're at in chapter two. Uh, Just any of them? The last verse on each, you know, on each assembly says to him that overcometh. All right. So verse 11 says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the assembly. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. Verse 17, he said, he, has an, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assembly. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the, new stone, or in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, save he who receives it. Two. Uh, let's see here. Uh, verse number 26 says, and he that overcomes, and keeps my work until the end, to him will I give power over the nation. See, so he, he Yeah, it should have been an earlier one. Oh, yeah. I just didn't see it. Verse number seven. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the assemblies. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. Chapter three. All right, so let's see here. Verse 5, he that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will, blot, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. Uh, let's see here. Verse 12 says, him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and he shall go no more out. But I will write upon him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my Elohim, and I will write upon him my new name. Revelations 21 and 7. I haven't finished with these yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, verse 21 says, To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. 21 and 7. Revelations 21 and 7. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. See, so it's all about overcoming. Whatever comes towards you in, in this life, we have to start thinking over, I have to overcome this. Remember, you have two choices. You either overcome it or it, overcomes you so what do we want to do we want to be an overcomer because that's who he's looking for he's not looking for people that are trying to piggyback he's not looking for unfaithful people some people are so unfaithful it's a pitiful shame uh y'all don't realize how blessed you are you got faithful leaders they're always here you can you can just it's like taking money to the bank you can count on it so let's learn to be obedient humble and faithful you can be obedient and humble, but if you're not faithful, you just miss the whole show. So faithfulness is a key in this journey. We got to learn to overcome situations and things in, you, in our life. I know we all have something coming at us, but we got to do what? Overcome it. Because that's what a Hasitan wants to do, is to make you lose hope, to cause you to uh, give up, to cause you to go backwards, because there's these things in front of you. 
But those things in front of you are there so that you can be an overcomer. And so um, there are some things we need to know what we need to overcome. Right here, we got people, places, and things. And I have a question. What is the hardest thing to overcome? Hmm? You're warm, uh, but I'm looking for one thing in particular. What is the hardest thing to overcome? Huh? No. Uh, you're warm. <laughs> the hardest thing to overcome is the thing you love. Never forget that. So the, what you love may be in people, places, or things. And it's, that's the toughest thing to overcome because in this journey, you're going to have to learn to overcome people. Whether it's mama, daddy, sister, brother, Amy, Anna, you, you, in-laws, outlaws, bylaws. It's just like Israel. When they were in Egypt, they had to learn to overcome the Egyptians or people. We need to learn that people does not have the final judgment for us. Yahweh does. <clears throat> he has the final judgment. So there's going to be people in your life that wants to stop you in your journey. But we got to learn to what? Overcome them. They don't, they don't want you to go this away. They want you to stay back where they're at. But we just read it. All those seven assemblies, it said, to him that overcometh will I give. And so we got to learn to overcome people. Sometimes it's, it's uh, your children. Sometimes it's your parents. Uh, you fill in the blank. Sometimes it's your, your best friend. Uh, that you have to walk away from in order to walk this journey, in order to be an overcomer, because we don't realize people do not have the last say. They may try to make you think they do, and might try to make you put a guilt trip on you and all of that, but we gotta keep our eyes on the prize. We gotta buy the truth and sell it now because it is, and keep our hands up. This is how you will overcome, is to keep our hands up, to overcome people. Because there's a lot of people in this journey. I remember when we first got started, man, there were so many people that uh, thought we were, uh, they thought we were in a cult. They thought we were crazy. thought we lost our minds. And, and uh, but now they see better, okay, because we learned early. We got to overcome. If you don't overcome, it's going to overcome you. Whatever is in your way, we got to learn to overcome. And so people, let's look at uh, uh, Joseph. What did he have to overcome? His brothers, even his mom and dad. See? Uh, get on the microphone, please. Sold, uh, lied on, thrown in prison, forgotten about. He had to overcome those things. And then when he saw those 10 brothers, well, you know he had to overcome some. See? So many times, it's people that are holding us back. And they're trying to keep us from getting to what Yahweh has for us. And we got to learn to let's overcome them. See? They're in our way. We can't have them standing in our way. See? It's either uh, uh, get in line and, and walk this or get out of the way. See? Either get in line and walk it or get out of my way because, hey, you get run over. Because we're, we're, we're keeping our eyes on the prize. See, and that's why it's so important. You got to watch people because people will play on you like nobody's business. And they try to give you a guilt trip and all that. But to me, I got my eyes on the prize. And so, okay. You know, we've lost so many people <laughs> till it, it's not funny. And so we just keep trucking because we know we got to overcome. Or there's many or few. We, we like to have many, but when they ain't, we just keep overcoming. We know because it's not in the numbers, it's in overcoming. And so we got to learn to overcome people because they're, 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 they will definitely try to hold you back. Look at the Egyptians. See, and this is what we need to be like Israel. The Egyptians tried to hold Israel back. Let's go to um, 
Exodus. Uh, what is that? One in ten or twelve, where it says, "And and the more they afflicted them, the more they what?" Okay. All right. Uh, Exodus one and fourteen, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Oh, so it's verse 12, sorry. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. See, that's what we got. We got to have that mentality. The more they afflict us, the more we're going to grow, the more we're going to prosper. Amen? See, that's the whole... That's why he, they thought by afflicting them. Remember, Hasitan is giving power to afflict us, right? But because of that affliction, we're going to get stronger and stronger, and we're going to become an overcomer. And that's what Israel did with these people. The Egyptians, they afflicted them, made the uh, way hard, but they overcame it. And because they afflicted them, they had more kids. <laughs> And, and and just kept growing and growing, and that's a that's a that's a a, a a shadow or pattern for us. The more they afflict us, the more we want to grow. The more we want to get better. Stop thinking, oh, this is against me. Yeah, it's against you for a reason. If nothing's against you, how are you gonna overcome? There's no way. Remember, pleasure is one of the most dangerous places you can be at. Because you let your guard, you let your hands down instead of keeping them up. So Joseph had to overcome people. Moshe had to overcome people. Look at all the people Moshe had to overcome, even his own brother and sister. Nephews and then the uh, coroner and, and, and all them. Look how many people he had to overcome. But he just kept overcoming. See, he didn't let it stun him. He didn't just, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, is they coming? No. They're there for a reason. Look at Gideon. He overcame. And on, look at Dawid. What did his brothers tell, tell him? Uh, what is that? First Samuel 17, and um, I think. It's the story of Elias. They asked him, what you, you little, I'm going to put it in, in Western style, what you little whoop a snapper, what you doing down here? See, he had to overcome his own brothers. They didn't want him down there. And he was the very one that could, that could kill the Goliath. Was that close? It's 1 Samuel 17 and 28 where it starts. Okay. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, for you've come down that you might see the battle. And David said, What did I do? Is there not a cause for me to be here? See, so... Sometimes it's your own, and most of the time it's, it's, remember, he said your enemy would be those, where? On your old household. So we got to learn to overcome people in our own household. And here's Dawid. He's the only one with a heart of a lion. The rest of them, when they seen Goliath, what they do? They didn't overcome, they ran. See? That's why Yahweh sends things our way, to see. Are we going to run away, or are we going to overcome? And so here was this big old Goliath, and, and here's a young kid. But David's mind was set. He said, I killed a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised giant, he's going to be the same way. See, there's big things, gigantic things going on in our lives, and we need to learn to say, it's too big for me to miss. <laughs> That's what David was thinking. I got this rock and I'm I'm good with it. <laughs> and I got a not only that, I got this rock, but I got a name on this rock. And he hit Goliath and he fell forward. So we can see they all had people in their lives that they had to overcome. The story goes on and on. Elijah had people he had to overcome. You yes, ma'am? Oh, I thought you 
Yahushua. What did he say? I came to my own and my own received me not. He had to overcome people. In Zechariah 13 and 6 or somewhere around that, they said they're going to ask him the question, where did you receive those wounds in your hand? He's going to say, I received these in the house of my friend. See, he had to overcome those people, his own people. And the, the sad story, sad thing about it, they were looking for him. But when he showed up, they didn't want to give up their power and control. So we got to learn to overcome people. Paul, Peter, and them had to do the same thing. They had to learn to overcome people. Because if you don't learn to overcome people, people will hold you back. See, we're after the prize, the high calling of Yahweh in Mashiach, Yahushua. And so when people get in our way, they either get in line or get behind. What did uh, uh, Yahushua tell Peter? He said, get behind me, Satan, because you hey, you don't know what you're talking about. I got to go to the stake. See, and sometimes, we, and, and uh, uh, a friend was asking me, uh, If y'all are so great, why don't, do, don't he do this? It's because he wants us to go through things and not around things. There are some things, that, yeah. But remember, Yahushua said about the miracles. How many got saved from miracles? See, and that's what are people looking for, miracles, miracles. Miracles don't save you, but the truth does. Even Yahushua does. See, overcoming helps you to get work. And remember, sometimes pain and hate gets you in the place that Yahweh wants you. Pain and hate got Yosef to Egypt. Save the future of a nation. Pain and hate, look what happened in Jacob. But he birthed the nation through pain and hate. See what I mean? So we got to start looking at things different. We got to learn people stand in our way. And we got to learn to overcome them. We don't have to be nasty, but we got to say, hey, you either get in get in line or get out of my way, because I'm coming through. Because people want to hold you back. Why you go down there? It ain't better but a few. Well, Yahushua didn't have but 12. We got uh, five tonight and plus, plus a Zoom. Yeah. No, there's an, there's an, this is a 365, 24-7 thing. So we got to learn to overcome people. Then the children of Israel got out in the wilderness. What did they have to overcome? They had 42 stops. So they got to overcome places. We got to overcome places. Sometimes we uh, been at a mountain way too long, and he wants us to move here or there. See, and so there are times we have to overcome places in our life because we. What happens? We get comfortable, and we don't grow when we're comfortable, and we refuse to move. Just like that old donkey, he gets to a place and he's comfortable, and he says, "I ain't moving." But until you light a fire on him, then he'll move just far enough to get out from under the fire. But see, we don't want to be like that. We want to keep our eyes on the prize. By the truth, sell it not because it is Christless. Our hands are up. That's how we move forward. See, this is how we fight. Put them hands up. Quote your scripture. Get them hands up. And so it, children of Israel had many places they had to overcome. In fact, Find that scripture where he's told them, uh, you've been at this mountain way too long. In fact, we got a song by that name. And he had to physically make them get away from there, just like they were when they had the Red Sea. He almost had to drag them away from there. When they got on the other side of the Red Sea, they wanted to stay there. Mm -hmm. He will do that to us because we got to learn overcome places in our life. That's Deuteronomy 2 and 3. Okay. He said, you have compassed this mountain long enough, turn northward. And so they had been at that mountain so long, I don't know, a year or so, whatever it was. They'd been there way too long. Sometimes we we're in places way too long. That keeps us from growing. You don't realize it keeps us from 
growing. How many see that? So, Yahushua had to overcome places. Guess where he was at? He was sitting at the right hand of majesty on high. <laughs> Did he overcome that? Because it, the father had given him a mission. So he had to come down to earth. So he had to leave his place, come down here. Scripture says he became poor that we might become rich. So he had, he had to overcome places. Uh, remember they run him out of town? Was going to throw him headlong. He had to overcome places. Hometown do it to you. See, so sometimes, many times you got overcome places, just like the children of Israel. Forty-two stops. And sometimes they just wanted to stay in one place way too long, but the father says it's, it's time to move. And so we have to overcome people, places, and now. We have to overcome what? Things. Israel uh, got to uh, Canaan's land. They had land that they didn't cultivate. Uh, trees, uh, fruit trees that they didn't uh, plant. Vineyards that they didn't plant. In other words, when they got there, it was turnkey. It was... If you don't know what turnkey is, it means you walk in the house and everything's good. The refrigerator's full, the air conditioner's gone, or the heat's gone, the uh, beds are made, it's turnkey. That's where they were. And so they got over there and things got in their way. So we're going to have to learn to overcome things because things can hold us back. Maybe it's your job, uh, maybe it's your car, or you fill in the blank. Sometimes things hold us back from doing the will of Yahweh. And we got to learn to be an overcomer of things. Sometimes uh, uh, Israel had to get rid of some things in order to go forward. Uh, let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and start at verse 1. It says that there's a time and a what? And a season. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, beginning in verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. So you see, there's a time and a season for all things. And there are some seasons where we have to get rid of things. Things hold us back. I see people supposed to be in the, this way, but they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing that they don't realize are holding them back. See? And so we got to learn to overcome people, places, and things. We watched uh, the show uh, American Picker, and you're talking about some of the folks got some things. And they still, they, they're about 90 years old, and they still don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> they walk in there and try to buy them. No, nah, I don't sell it. See, so we got to learn some things we just got to get rid of. Amen? So that's powerful. Now you know you're looking at what we have to overcome. People, places, and things. In this journey, all three of them. Sometimes they're all at once. Sometimes they're singular. But we got to realize, if I do not overcome it, it's going to overcome me. Which do you want? This is the question I ask. Which do you want? Do you want it to overcome you? Do you want it to overcome? Do you want? Do you want to overcome it? Let's go to Revelations uh, twelve, start at verse ten, and verse eleven is the main one. Now, Revelations twelve, beginning in verse ten. Now I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, "Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our Elohim." 
and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto the death. See, he talks about overcoming. Now, here's another thing we got to overcome. The world, the flesh, and the devil. What do we mean by the world? The world has all these neon signs and they're trying to draw you to this, trying to draw you to that. It takes so that you take your eyes off the prize. See, they have these neon signs, oh, this and all oh, that. But we got to overcome what the world has to offer. Just like Yahushua, he overcame. And so if he overcame, guess what we got to do? We got to overcome. And we're working on it. It's not something that happens overnight, but if we could just keep practicing, we get better at it. And we want you to understand uh, the situation and the circumstances. It's easier to cooperate with overcoming. Remember, he's not giving anything to you. If you're not an overcomer, he's not giving it to you. I'm sorry. I didn't write the book. He did. And we just, I read it. How do you, we have to overcome the devil over here. And how did they do it? By the blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony, not living their lives unto death. See, we're going to have to overcome him, or he's going to overcome us. Let's go to Revelation uh, 20 and start at verse 7. <clears throat> 20 and 7 says, And when the thousand years are expired, Hasatan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. See, they didn't learn to overcome him. They accepted the lie that he had. Why? Let's go to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 or 10 or 11, somewhere it says, because you have not a love for the truth, I will send you strong delusion that you do what? Might believe the lie and be damned. 2 Thessalonians 2, beginning in verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Hasatan, with all power and lies as signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Boy, is that what we see today? It is exploding here. It is really exploding. So, I know I jumped ahead of myself, but I, anyway, we're going to have to overcome the devil. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and start at verse 1 and see how, see how Yahushua overcome Hasatan. See, he had to overcome him too. We got to do it too. Look at how he did it. Matthew 4, beginning in verse 1. Then was Yahushua led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of Hasatan. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And the tempter come to him and said, If you be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. So you see, when Hasitan attacked, what did Yahushua do? He said, It is written, and he quoted directly from the Torah. So we have to do the same thing to overcome him. Because he's coming at us. There's no way around it. See, even the father said, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> See, he said, yeah, you can have him, but just don't take his life. See, and so Yahushua, this is how he overcame him. All right, the next one. All right, verse 5. <clears throat> says, Then the devil, the devil took him into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you be the son of Elohim, cast yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, 
lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, You shall not tempt Yahweh your Elohim. See, he's always asking one of the biggest words in the English language is, If. <laughs> See, but every time Yahushua didn't say, Don't you know who I am? Why don't you know I'm your creator? No, he didn't do that. He said, It is written. And then he quoted the scripture. That's how he did it. So how are we going to do it? He's our example. We must follow in his what? Footsteps. All right, the next one. Verse 8 says, Again, the devil took him into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and the glory of them. And he said unto them, All these things I'll give you if you'll fall down if. and worship me. That, that big word, if. See? And then what did Yahushua say? Then Yahushua said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahweh your Elohim, and him only shall you serve. See? So we're going to have to overcome him because he's coming at us. So quit thinking, Oh, this is after me. <laughs> Start thinking, overcoming. He's only looking for people that overcome. Not, if you're not overcoming, he's not looking for you. See? And he's trying to get, and we know it from a personal point of view. We grow up learning that if we don't learn something, guess what's going to happen to us? We're going to be homeless or something. But we learn, I want to overcome and do better. And because we overcome, we have uh, houses and lands and, and these things because we what? We overcame those wicked thoughts that have, should be just handed to me. So many people are just looking for something to be what? Handed to them. But what they don't realize is if it's handed to them, they will not take care of it and there's something on the back side of that. Always something. Remember, if the government gives you something, on the back side, they're going to take something. Always. That's their pattern. So that's why I I don't let the government give it to somebody else. Just let me out here. Hands up. If y'all be for us, who can be against us? Amen? So, we see how our, our example overcome Hasitan. We got to do the same thing. We have to overcome him or he's going to overcome us. Look what happened to those people. He was fresh out of prison. Been in prison a thousand years. And yet he went out and those people were deceived. Because they weren't trying to overcome. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians uh, 4.14. Ephesians 4 and 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See, and Shane had a good testimony about that this week. I don't know if he want to talk about it or not. But people are out there trying to deceive people. They're lying in wait to deceive you with things uh, that are outlandish. And here's what gets me. The bigger the lie, the bigger the crowd. That's what gets me. The bigger the lie, the bigger the crowd. You tell the truth, and you ain't going to get but a few. See? But there are people out there trying to deceive people. See, So we got to have spiritual discernment. we got to let the Ruach HaKodesh and the Word come together so we can have spiritual discernment to know when something false is before us. Amen? Because Hasitani, the devil don't care how he gets us. He don't care as long as he gets us. But we got the word of Yahweh. We got the blood of Mashiach. See? And if you in Romans 8 31, if Yahoo will be for us, who can be against us? See? And here's another Yahoo did not give us a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. We got to use those scriptures. He didn't give them for us just to look at them. He didn't give them and say, No, this is in my, is that what you're going to tell the devil? Oh, you know what's in my heart? Really? See, that, don't 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 do give me that. He knows what's well, you go you gonna go tell the devil you know what's in my heart. No, you got to speak. 
It's all about speaking. How was this world created? Speaking. So our, this mouth is so powerful. And when you add the hands to it, wow. And we fulfill the biblical way, two or three witnesses. Amen? How many see that? And so we got to learn to overcome what Hasatan is putting before us. He doesn't care. And remember, uh, he can transform himself into what? An angel of light. So we got to have the discernment because they're, here's the sad thing. People are walking around and, they, and they, they, they're charismatic and you think they got the truth, but they're just pushing a lie. Amen? So we got to be uh, on the lookout. I'll tell you something I do. This is kind of, some of you may laugh, but <laughs> this is something I do. I, I go walking around the pond early in the morning. But one of the things I do, I practice this almost every day. All the cows are black, every last one of them. And I look for the bull. All of them are black. He's black. All the cows are black. But I, I, all, I think he's got about 50 or 60 cows there. I'm looking for one. See, that, that practice helps me in my everyday walk of life. That's how you find things that are different. Because you're looking for a pattern. And so every day I walk around the pond to see, can I spot him? With all, everything's black. All of them black. So how do I know when I see him? Besides the obvious. Huh? Yeah. One thing he has, he's the only one in the herd with a tag in his right ear. That's how I spotted him today. Because I couldn't see the regular stuff. But I seen that he had a tag in his right He's the only one. He's the only one with a big hump on his neck. See what I mean? Certain things you got to look for in order to spot it, because they're all black. <laughs> and sometimes they're far away, and I'm, I'm trying to, because I practice that, because I want to be able to discern, use that in my everyday walk of life, looking for things that are different. Amen? Seems silly, but you need to learn how to practice and look for difference in things. So that's how you know what's going to happen, what's going on. So every day I... I he may be over there by their pond, but I'm still looking to see if I can discern that far away. I may see that. Let's practice things that help us in the journey. That helps me in my journey. To look for this, because matter of fact, this is how, I, and not that, but when I took my uh, ham radio license test, especially the last test, the word, the, the questions was all the same, except for there was a certain one word that was different. And I looked for that certain word because it, the question was asked the same. And when I saw that certain word, I knew that's the right answer. See, they had four questions. They all looked the same. Asked almost exactly the same. But the only difference is there's this one word is the key. It says, this is the right answer. You see how, how, this, how we need to be able to discern things, start practicing to be able to discern because the enemy is going to get worse. He's going to get better at trying to deceive. Look at what happened. We just read it in Revelation 27. In prison a thousand years, he's still deceived. Still deceived. So what's he trying to do to us? To deceive us. And so now that I, I'm looking for how things are supposed to be versus how things are, I can tell the difference. And that's how I passed the test. Because there were about five questions and four questions in uh, multiple qu choice in each one of those questions. And they looked so much alike. But I was looking for that one word. And every time I seen that one, I said, yeah, that one's right. And I looked, that one's right. That's the kind of discernment we need to have to overcome Hasitan. Because he ain't this uh, woolly bully person some people are trying to make you believe. The scripture said, let's go to that. Uh, 
Ezekiel 28 and uh, 14, where it says, uh, because of you, you got lifted up because of your beauty, till uh, uh, iniquity was found in you because of you were lifted up because of your beauty. That's how they, see, same principle. That's how they found it. They looked and saw, uh-oh, something's different. All right, 28 and Ezekiel 28 and 15. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. See? They saw something different. That's how they found it. See, that's, that's a pattern for us. That's how heaven does it. They're looking for something different. And that's why they know what's truth, what's error. What's righteousness, what's sin. Because sometimes it looks so close. Even Hasatan can transform it and his ministers transform themselves into angels of light. Amen. They talk good, look good, may roll in the floor and spit in your face and shake you till you get tired of it, but we still got to be able to discern what's what's truth and what's error. Amen. Because they're coming after us. And so now we're learning what we need to overcome. We need to overcome the devil because he, he's, he's after every person that is living the truth. See, he ain't after them people that ain't living it. He already got them. See, what did uh, 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 Yahushua tell uh, Peter? Hasitan is what? Seeking you to shift you like what? Wheat. Sift you like wheat. See? He, he's after us. So, we got to learn to discern. See, and that's why I practice that. Every time I walk around that pond, they're all black. 50 of them. They're all black. And sometimes they're way over there. Sometimes I can't discern because they're too far. But when they're close enough that I can get a recognition and I start looking for certain things. Because they're all black and you can't see his regular stuff. And so I start looking at, is there a tag in his ear? How big is his head? Is there a hump on his head? Is his, how big he is? Because he's bigger than all the rest of them. But how do you tell that when they're all black? <laughs> see, so you got to learn to discern. Amen? That's, that's what I practice. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that reminds me of... Uh these little activities, uh, you know, I used to, to give Haley, you know, where everything looked the same, but there was something a little bit different she had to find. It just reminds me of that, you know. Yeah, and they got a game, uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, they got uh, two pictures, and, and can you spot the difference? I like that, too. Can you spot the difference? See, learn to practice those things because we need to be able to spot the difference. Because remember... He's coming as an angel of light. His ministers are transformed into an angel. And we got to be able to whoop, spot the difference. Amen? Just think. They're going to say that uh, the beast is the one. But how do we spot the difference? How do we know it's not him? Because the beast is wounded where? In his head. Where's Yahushua wounded? Hands and feet and side. <laughs> See, there is a difference, physically speaking. So we got to be able to discern things to overcome him because he's out there. Amen? All right, now, we're going to get to the one that gives us the most problem. If any of them give us the most problem, is this one. The flush. And we have, used to have a sister say she that's what she pronounced it. The flush is in my way. And we used to say, tell her, you flush the stew, but this is the flesh. And, and the Hebrew is the nephesh, I believe. But anyway, we got to learn to overcome the flesh. This, the, the flesh is the basar. Uh, what is nephesh? Nephesh is the animal soul. Oh, yeah. And so uh, we got to overcome that. Because how close is he? 
the enemy from within. <laughs> See, that's why we got to overcome the flesh, because he's the enemy from within. How many times has the flesh lied to us? Mm -hmm. So we have to overcome that. Uh, let's go to Romans, uh, I think it's 7 and 15, where Paul talks about um, overcoming. Romans 7 beginning in 15 for that which I do which I do I allow not for what I would that do I not uh, start it see what 13 says I'm, I'm going I'm too deep into it. 13 right. says was then that which is good made death unto me by no means but sin that it might appear yeah. sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. See, what is Paul struggling with? This is the great apostle. Yeah, I, I, I want to read it all down through there. But what is the apostle struggling with? His own flesh. Amen? And if he was struggling with it, guess what? All right, go ahead. Right, verse 16 says, If then I do that which I should not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more me that does it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I cannot find. For the good that I would, I cannot do. But the evil which I do not, or which I don't want to do, that I do. Now, if I do that which I don't want to, it is no more myself that does it, but the sin that dwells in it. See, even the great apostle Paul was struggling with the flesh. So, this is the enemy from within. And it's taken down many, 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 many people. Adam and Eve. Eve was a seed, but Adam just gave in. <laughs> Look at Cain, same problem. His flesh overcame him to kill his brother. Why would a man want to kill his brother and think it would be acceptable with Yahweh? How about deception, delusion? Just think about Noah. He preached 120 years. All those people in the world, the world he was in, he had to overcome. He had to overcome their flesh. We're going to have the same thing, too. We're going to have to overcome this thing that was within, that's gnawing at us, and it don't give us no break. So the only way we're going to overcome it is with the word of Yahweh. Amen? That's what makes the flesh. Remember, we had it not too long ago. The, 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 uh, the old man and the new man. Well, the flesh is the old man. <laughs> um, what is that at? Uh, talks about the new man. Is that Colossians 2 and something? What is Colossians? Let me see if I can find it right here. But it talks about the old man and new man. The old man and the new man. And so, I thought it was Colossians. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, it was, right, so Colossians, the flesh. Colossians 3 and 9 says, Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See, we've got to put off the flesh or the old man that wants to take us down. That's sad. The enemy from within wants to take us down. Look at America, same thing. The enemy from within. 
So we have to fight the enemy from within. Because he will lie to us and lie to us and lie and lie some more. Amen. So in this journey, we're going to have to overcome the world, the flesh, the things that are so close to us. Remember I told you the hardest thing to overcome is what you love. Who doesn't love itself? <laughs> and, some, and that's why it's so, sometimes it's so hard for alcoholics and drug addicts to get over things because they love that feeling. They actually love that feeling. Hmm. Microphone, please, man. That's why people with mental illnesses will go off their meds because they like the feelings that they have when they're off the meds. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we got to work hard at this. It's 365, 24 7, there's no break. And that's why we need to pray for one another. Always pray for one another. You don't have to call everybody by name to say, y'all. Uh, all those at the assembly and on Zoom, uh, all that you know, you know, pray for them. Because we don't know what's going on in their life. We don't know what the flesh is trying to trick them into doing. See, flesh is he's cunning because he's on the inside. <laughs> so when the people are worried about the enemy without, it's the enemy within. What did Yahushua say? Your enemy would be they where? Own household. This is our own household. Our yeah. own household wants to take us down that sad end because it wants its will and way. It's contrary to what Yahweh wants for us. And it don't like it at all. I got news going down. Going down. Amen. Hands up. Hands up. That's all I can say. And so, you look at all the journey, even some great men. What brought David down? He was a man after Yahweh's own heart, but what brought him down? His own flesh. See, you can be a great person. It doesn't matter. The flesh don't care who you are. David, a great man. Look what happened. His own, it, it wasn't an enemy that did it to him. He did it to himself. You can't blame nobody but yourself. Sometimes that's what we need to do. We don't need to blame nobody but ourselves. See? So, we, we look at this and see these things we have to overcome. And Yahweh and Yahushua sitting in heaven. And he's rooting, they're rooting for us to what? Overcome. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, go to Acts chapter 7. I think it is. I think it's the last two verses where it says that Yahushua stood up when they were stoning Stephen. All right. So Acts 7 and 59 says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Elohim and saying, Master Yahushua received my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Yahushua, do not lay this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Where's the one about the Yahushua stood up? And maybe a couple of verses before that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, it's verse 56. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. So what was he doing? Watching him overcome. See, he overcame being beaten. And he said, lay that not to this charge. Let's go to, uh, if you ever want to learn about overcoming, just go to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, we're going to skip it, uh, most of it. Let's go to, uh, uh, what is it? where it talks about uh, Moshe uh, refusing the uh, pleasures of sin for a season, 25, 27, somewhere around in there. Okay. 
Okay. It says, <clears throat> verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because he saw, they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he had come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See, he had overcome the what? The pleasures of sin for a season. That appeals to what? The flesh. See, that's what I mean. We must be overcomers, and this is number one, the flesh. It's brought down a many, many, many people. And then when you keep reading, and then verse, I think, 32 says, And the time would fail me to tell of who Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and Samuel and the prophets who through faith, what? Subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. And others, I'm skipping a little bit. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they made a pain a better resurrection. See, they overcame. How many see that? i uh, read that because I probably butchered it pretty good. <laughs> All right, verse 32. What shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and of Jephthah and David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness obtained promises and stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the enemies of, or the armies of the alien. And women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. See, all these people <clears throat> knew that they must do what? Overcome. All of them. They, they knew the only way we're going to win this battle is to overcome. Saints, the only way we're going to win this is to overcome. I know there's adverse things happening in all our lives, but we, we, we've got to have this uh, the mentality. I want this to make me stronger. I, I, I've got a new song called Go Ahead, Strengthen My Resolve. If I want all the adverse things to help me to get stronger and not weaker. Because I know the flesh, we call him Little Willie. He's a bad boy. What he can't change, he will destroy. So uh, tonight we're looking at what we have to overcome. And we have to work on it all the time. Because there's no, there, there's no uh, days off. You can be in your bed and... Thoughts going through your mind and all kind of stuff. See, it's things we have to steadily overcome because that's what he comes back. Let's go to um, Revelations uh, 22, and I think it's 12 through 14. Now, Revelations 22, beginning in verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Wow. How are you going to get there? Overcoming. The only way we're going to get there. We've got to stop murmuring and complaining about everything that's adverse to us, and get it in our head. It's there for me to overcome. How many see that? Uh, and, and sometimes we have to go here and there to learn how to overcome. Just like today, uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, my welder went out. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to have to buy a new one. But I just kept searching to see what is wrong with this welder. And I ran across a, a video on YouTube, and he said, I, I got out my uh, uh, machine, it's my what you call that thing, electrical, start testing electric line. Yeah. Yeah, your watt meter, whatever you call it, volt meter. He said, I went through the whole thing, nothing. And he said, 
I went to the simplest thing. I went and looked at the trigger and the wire had come loose. See, I did the same thing. So I overcome and I have no bad news. <laughs> See what I mean? Things are there for us to what? Overcome. Quit looking for a way around it. So many people are looking for ways. He doesn't want you to go around it. He wants you to go through it. In fact, he prayed. In John 17 and maybe 17, he said, I pray that you take them not out of this world, but they got to go through it. So many people don't want to go through nothing. There's, there's a, that, if you don't go through nothing, I'm telling you now, there's no payday. Even the world's got a got a got a uh, uh, slogan, no pain. So why do we expect to be different? Did I give you a scripture? John seventeen yeah. and fifteen, 15 says, "I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil." See, we got to go through it. So some things. We, we're trying to get away from, we need to just go through it because that's why he sent it there. Don't you know he could have took uh, Israel with the big wings of him, his? They didn't have to walk through the Red Sea. He could have flew them all away, but they weren't ready. Their faith wasn't ready. Their flesh was sticking up so bad. So he says, all right, I'm going to start building your faith. Some of them never learn, but the younger generation, they learn, and they got to go. See, so the faith is the thing. I mean, the flesh is the thing that holds so, us back so many times. And we got that, and it's because it's the enemy from within. We get this lie from within. We get, that's what I say. Remember them cows, we got to discern when little Willie's lying to us. Amen? How many see that? Because, uh, He's a bad boy. What he can't change, he will destroy. Tammy Austin said, it's just like a bull in a china club. <laughs> you know, that's what little Willie is. That's what the flesh is. It will destroy anything that's good. So let's work on these things, overcoming people, places, things, the world, the devil, and the flesh. Number one. This is number one in our life. Because if you take this guy out, the world and the devil ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing none, of, none of these other things appeal. Amen? Abba, we love and appreciate you. Appreciate your son, Yahushua, Bashem, Yahushua. Amen.